Do you want to learn how to build a farmhouse table and install breadboard ends? Stick around and I'll show you how. Hey, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com and today I'm going to show you how to build a farmhouse table with custom turned legs and breadboard ends. And also just to let you know, I have easy to read plans and templates available in the description below. So make sure to check those out and build this table for yourself or some clients. Let's get to the build. I start off this build by prepping the material I'll need for the legs. Now here I'm cutting 8 quarter maple at the miter saw and I'm cutting it about an inch longer than I'll need my final leg length to be. Now over at the table saw I'm ripping these boards in half and as you see I have the boards on the table saw so that they will rock. What that does is it prevents the board from pinching the blade as I finish the cut. If the boards were to pinch the blade that could cause a kickback. Now the next process is over at the joiner and at this point I'm simply milling one face on each one of these boards flat. Alright and this is our last stop for the video on how to make table legs. Uh, these legs are actually going to be turned so I have a separate video breaking out how to turn a set of identical table legs. So make sure you check that out, it is linked above. All right, here I've chosen the cream of the crop of my boards to make the tabletop. And as you see, I'm just laying out where I want all of my rough cuts to be over at the miter saw. And speaking of the miter saw, here we are once again, uh, rough cutting to about one inch longer than what I need for my final leaf. Now here I'm using my Craig plunge saw to get one edge of this board flat. It was so warped that I wouldn't have had a straight cut off of the table saw. And I'm going ahead and ripping some of these boards down to a narrower width because I will not be able to fit them all on my joiner. Now this is really where a joiner shines in the workshop. As you see, I'm taking several passes to get the cup out of this board. And here in just a second, you'll notice that the center of the board is substantially thicker than the ends. Had I not had a joiner, this would have taken a very, very long time using the planer along with the planer sled. Here I'm switching out my rough cut ripping blade uh, for a glue line rip ripping blade. And uh, basically the difference is that with the glue line rip, I get a much smoother surface. So that way I can go straight from the table saw to clamps without having to go back to the joiner or pay any extra attention to those glue edges. So while I'm ripping these individual boards to their final width, I'm doing my best to keep an even feed rate and that is going to ensure that I get a nice smooth edge for my glue up. Here I'm ready to glue up the tabletop and as you see I'm doing this in three different sections. Basically I'm gluing three sets of three boards together. Now the reason I'm doing it that way is because my planer is not wide enough to run the entire width of the tabletop through at once. At the planer I'm removing the bulk of the material from these boards and I'm bringing them down just shy of their finished thickness. And then over at the drum sander I'm running them through to clean up any marks from the planer and bring it down to its final thickness. So now we're going to start doing some layout for the dominoes to help align this tabletop during the glue up. Now if you don't have a domino, you can use a biscuit joiner or you can just be really careful during your glue up. This is just a tool that helps make the job a little bit faster. So at this point I'm going to go ahead and lay out my clamps and I'm going to put all of my boards in order on those clamps. Once everything's where I want it to be, I'm going to go ahead and install the dominoes on the two outside boards. I'll put glue where it needs to be, and then we'll get everything clamped together. Whenever possible, I always try to lift up the tabletop so that I can see uh, both sides of the glue line and make sure I have good squeeze out. Set up on the Craig ACS, I'm going to cut this tabletop to its final length and I'm also going to cut the ends square with the sides. Just an aside, I cannot tell you guys how much having the ACS in my shop has improved my workflow. It's made cuts like this so much faster, easier, and more accurate 
I just can't even dream of going back to the old way of doing this. To join the breadboards for this table, I'm going to be using the domino. Now, if you don't have a domino, no big deal. I have another video linked above right here. You can go check that out and see how to attach a breadboard using a tongue and groove joint. It's pretty easy. All right, so now I'm setting up with the plunge saw to trim the breadboard ends flush with the side of the table. If you don't have a plunge saw, no big deal. Uh, you could always rough cut it with a jigsaw and then use a straight edge and a router to make those breadboard ends flush. Now, since sanding is everybody's favorite part of a project, I will keep it brief, but I just wanted to say if this is your first time over to the channel, thank you so much for coming over. And if you consider subscribing, I would really appreciate it. Oh, don't forget to hit that bell notification and keep up with all my latest projects. Thanks. Okay, so getting back at it, here we are trimming the aprons to their final length. Now these have already been planed and sanded to their final thickness and ripped to their final widths. Here we're just cross cutting them to their final length so that they are ready for joinery. And as you probably guessed, I'm going back with the domino. Here I am marking my center lines for the domino to line up on. Another easy way to join these is you can use pocket hole joinery through the apron into the leg, or you can use some table leg hardware that I will link to in the description below. All right, now that all of the aprons have their dominoes cut, I'm laying out the legs here in the orientation that I want them to be on the table. And now what I'm going to do is mark out on the top of these legs where I want those aprons to be and then where I want the corresponding domino joinery to be laid out. Here I'm just doing a quick test fit. I wanna make sure that the apron is the correct offset from the outside of the leg. So now I'm going ahead and just sanding back all of those pencil lines and I actually hadn't done any final sanding on the pommels here. So just hitting that real quick before we move on to assembly. And whoa, 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 we already cut dominoes, right? What's going on? Oh, in my infinite wisdom and excitement, I actually cut the dominoes on the inside of the inside, if that makes sense where they needed to be on the outside. So you see where I'm gluing in the dominoes. Uh, that is the proper placement in the plans that I have linked below. This is called out in the proper uh, spot. I, I was just the guinea pig. I got excited because this thing was almost done and I couldn't wait to see it together. So forgive me, please. All right, so here what I'm doing is pre-assembling the short sides of the table. So the apron is in place, I'm clamping it, and then I'm putting the long apron in place. You can probably guess why I did it in this order. It's just a little bit easier to manage. And just a quick little hack for you. If you don't have any long clamps like this for a table, you can always use a ratchet strap to cinch down that long apron. Okay, so I forgot to film how to attach the tabletop to the base. Sorry about that. Uh, basically what I do is I cut a series of slots in the apron that I then insert these Z clips into. Uh, now this is the end that goes into that slot and then there's a hole right here and you run a screw from the underside of the Z clip into the underside of the tabletop and that secures the tabletop to the base. Now if you're like me you probably want to see a video on how to do that so check this one out right here and I hope that helps. If you want to build a table just like this one, make sure you hit that link below for the easy to read plans and templates, or you can grab them right here. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the project.
Ah, oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.